Mr. This story would personify the social life of the chemical elements and compounds as real characters of the world of personified chemistry, the chemistry land. Interestingly, the elemental and compound people of chemistry land will suffer themselves with the deadliest sin, the lethal pride. They'll naturally receive punishments through the Almighty Creator. Proud nature is often considered a devil force in human existence. Is pride only belong to human beings? Hopefully, the answer will come after listening to this personified story. Chapter 1 Meeting of Sad Mr. Carbon with the Council Once upon a time, old Mr. Carbon wandered lonely as flying pollen in the park. Something was pinching him, making him sad. Sparkling diamond tears were rolling and drenched its bearded face. He was dark, wrinkled skin with a sharp conch, a long beard and black hat wearings in the traditional style. There was a long hawthorn wooden stick in his hand, visibly supporting him. Air. The combined council of Mr. Daniel Nitrogen, Mr. Priestly Oxygen, and other gasoline men came around him, hummed with energy and sympathy. The foresight of air found him a multi-skilled gem that could be polished to be a diamond. Earth, the mother leader of the council, was on holiday. In her absence, the Air Council decided not to lose this treasure, skillful carbon. Mr. Carbon needed work for his dwelling and livelihood. The kind-hearted council offered him a chef job in a food factory, leaves of plants and trees. He happily accepted as he was the master of ready-made traditional delicious recipes for health, fruits and vegetables using the photosynthesis process. He got the feeling like his dream became true. Chapter 2 Carbon's Bonding with Oxygen Molecule in the Kitchen of Tree the next day, he started his work in the kitchen of the food factory with Mr. Priestley Oxygen. Soon they developed good chemistry of work between them. Mr. Oxygen was a partly bolded gas man spending his life for humanity. His work all over the world was making Earth worth living. He was an experienced and matured gasser man who was performing a variety of duties. He was a member of the council, the chef, and also responsible for the breakdown of the food to provide energy. He gave the name to this special duty as respiration. He wore the tallest hat and a white apron complete chef get up in the kitchen. His work wear in the respiration factory was a lab coat and surgical chef like cap. People were calling him Dr. Happy Respiration. Chapter 3 Chemistry of Carbon, Oxygen Molecule and Water Molecule in the Kitchen of Chemistry Land. Gradually, Oxygen grew his chemistry with Mr. Carbon and Mr. Water to synthesize sweet, sour, and juicy photosynthetic fruits and vegetables. Their recipes were getting international fame for their peculiar taste, color, and freshness. In this pragmatic, 
photosynthesis, they were habitual to discussing with each other and making criteria for quality and converting carbon to carbon dioxide to react with water. All this grew up in an open atmosphere. It was their routine. They called it the initial step. Chapter 4 Kitchen's Juicy Ingredients for Photosynthesis In the kitchen of the trees, they used their ingredients like soil, chlorophyll and sunlight to cook food. Chapter 5 Contracts of Kitchen's Chefs with the sky and ground realities. For the non stop transmission of worthy ingredients, the Air Council signed two contracts. The first one was with soil and roots, means ground realities, for receiving powerful multi minerals and water supply. The second contract of Air Council was with sky realities means the sun and watery clouds for an uninterrupted supply of solar energy and water during an emergency period. Cool chlorophyll, the green colored activator, was a hometown product in the leaves. The kitchen had a wide variety of spices responsible for a peculiarly sweet, sour, and juicy taste. In this recipe, they employed six member molecules of carbon dioxide with six member molecules of water cooked under solar powered energy, tampering with chlorophyll to add green color for resultant juicy glucose. In this way, the classic meal was ready to munch by living beings. The conclusion was that they were fueling their passion with the heat of sunlight to make it a reality. The title of this recipe was The Photosynthesis. Chapter 6 Carbon Tricks and Traps for Air Council One day, the Quality Control Department of the Air Council called a monthly progress meeting. It was to check the performance of employees and the quality of the food. They felt satisfied and rewarded appreciation to experts Mr. Carbon and Master Chef Mr. Oxygen. Mr. Carbon was looking for that perfect moment to strike while the air was hot. He put forth his idea to the air representatives for execution. According to him, many young energetic carbons were jobless. The idea was to keep them busy in the same sort of ready-made food factories, increasing food productions and flourishing the ready-made food business, and to decrease the unemployment ratio in the chemistry land. As is stated by him, the presence of carbon dioxide already exists in the council working for photosynthesis but was limited. With more carbon dioxide, more food production would be possible. The council representatives were already reviewing food trading proposals in the new international marketplaces. Everyone thought that the gorgeous proposal of Mr. Carbon was ideal for the prosperity of Mr. Land. Mr. Oxygen's Powerful Opinion After listening to Mr. Carbon's intentions, Mr. Priestley Oxygen, the most active member of Air Council, raised his voice. That voice sounded against his proposal. His counter-arguments looked more sensible than Mr. Daniel Nitrogen and other high members of Air Council. According to him, in the chemistry land, the kitchen's leaves were not enough for the number of unemployed young carbons. So, 
job consideration for every carbon is not possible. Working for extra young carbons would increase the quantity of carbon dioxide and be responsible for the shortage of oxygen workers. In the atmosphere, an extra quantity of carbon dioxide would be available. However, the number of trees to use carbon dioxide would be less for photosynthesis. Therefore, less photosynthesis would leave unused carbon dioxide wandering in the open atmosphere. Less photosynthesis would be responsible for the less production of oxygen. Ultimately, the natural percentage of the number of carbon dioxide the Almighty God has given would be disturbed. This shortage of oxygen workers would destroy the respiration industry and the balance of the nature. It would develop crisis for living beings. He requested the Air Council to choose candidates. The number of unemployed carbons according to need, not in greed. Chapter 8 Wrong Decision of Mr. Daniel Nitrogen Mr. Daniel Nitrogen was an easy-going gaso man with rich hair in the center of his head. His share in the business of air was 78%. He used his authority for the dispute and announced an unjust decision against Mr. Oxygen, a sincere member of the Air Council. Chapter 9 Time is the Best Teacher Mr. Oxygen concluded not to debate more on this unfair judgment. He knew that, in the absence of Mother Earth, Mr. Nitrogen was the authority. He thought future events would determine that his evaluation was correct and justified, as time is the best teacher. With the feeling of helplessness, Mr. Oxygen again initiated a kind gesture of working with Mr. Carbon, combinedly they were busy synthesizing carbon dioxide to bring out chains of food using the recipe of photosynthesis. As time was running away, Mr. Oxygen was absorbed more and more to accommodate unemployed carbons to fulfill the order of Mr. Nitrogen. He was feeling exhausted from doing too much and getting no relaxation. Chapter 10 Unnecessary Increment of Carbon Dioxide During this operation, three ways were producing carbon dioxide. Number 1. By respiration. Number 2. Mr. Carbon's recommended employees mean atomic carbons. Number 3. Burning fuels and synthetic materials mean a combustion process. They were making covalent bonds with atmospheric oxygen molecules to produce molecules of carbon dioxide. These newborn carbon dioxide were unable to be fully used by other ingredients. Therefore, the leftover molecules were going into the air, doing nothing and wandering uselessly and lonely. Chapter 11 Crimes of Carbon Dioxide When they had nothing to do, they committed sins around the atmosphere. They were responsible for crimes Number one, raising the temperature of the earth, which automatically caused the melting of glaciers. Two, affected natural greenhouse. Three, affected human health, like headaches, dizziness, allergies, and blood pressures. Four, the warmer temperatures also stressed plants. 5. Destroyed the ozone layer of the atmosphere by creating holes, which became the reason for the air pollution crisis. 
Chapter 12 Air Having Critical Crisis The first target for the effect of pollution due to unwanted carbon dioxide was the Air Council of the Earth. The council members started feeling heavy and tired. They couldn't efficiently blow in the air and felt frustrated in activities. The symptoms were suffocation, stomach ache, and constipation. The ozone layer, the safeguard between Earth and the atmosphere, got deep wounds in fighting these alien carbon dioxide. It got a deep injury, like hole. Doctors were giving no hope for recovery of the ozone layer under these circumstances. Children and their parents avoided coming into the park. They were getting different allergies, lungs problems, and several other diseases. Earth diseases were drought, storms, heat waves, rising sea levels, melting glaciers, and severe weather changes like global warming and the greenhouse effect. Chapter 13 Sick Mom Earth in Action Meanwhile, the Earth was feeling uneasy due to infections. It was due to complaints against crimes of unused carbon dioxide. These unwanted carbon dioxide were responsible for providing favorable conditions for the growth of germs and viral infections, damaging the peaceful health of the land. It is common saying, when the mom is sick, the whole family she looks after feels sick. Mom Earth was unsafe due to the high crime rate of harmful sources and inborn diseases. The cry was everywhere. It could cause human calamity. Seeing no cure solution, she cancelled her holidays, which she got to enjoy and called an emergency meeting of air. She was upset and showed fury towards the dictatorship of Mr. Priestley Nitrogen and the slavery attitude of other stakeholders. She scolded him for selfish decisions without knowing the ground realities and for putting the whole land dwellers into danger. Furthermore, he did not think over Mr. Oxygen reservations the most pragmatic member of the council. Therefore, at once she called off extra carbon services. Chapter 14 Rebellious Attitude of Mr. Carbon Towards Air Council Rebellion Mr. Carbon did not ready to accept it. He spoke to all carbon workers to go against this kicking out. He assured them to talk to Mr. Priestley Oxygen for this merciless verdict. Mr. Carbon, the leader, randomly allowed penetration of unemployed young carbons in form of carbon dioxide. His greedy nature forgot the favor. This ungrateful carbon refused to stop working and made a rebellion union with other carbon colleagues and carbon dioxide to show them his true colors towards his opponents. Chapter 15 Oxygen's Lesson to Authority Mr. Oxygen also stubbornly resisted the authority to teach the Air Council a lesson. He continued his work not only with ungrateful carbon but with new disease producing Miss Lavoisier. Sulfur too. The most common dwelling of Miss Sulfur was factories. With co sulfur workers, she habitually came out in form of sulfur dioxides to disguise themselves. Miss Lavoisier was a smelly and combative elemental woman. She was producing social and commercial bonds with Mr. Oxygen. Sulfur dioxide molecules were everywhere in the surrounding atmosphere, especially near factories. It was the way 
the air filled with the choking odor of sulfur dioxides and unwanted carbon dioxide. Chapter 16 The Earth's Communications to Almighty God It was a hard time for Kim Sterling to live healthily. Earth felt helpless for the counteract of oxygen due to his breath. The condition of mom Earth was getting poor day by day. She was worried about the conflicts among members. She prayed to the eternal physician, Almighty God, to find some solutions to these unbearable crimes. Mr. Carbon and Miss Sulphur were enjoying doing their sins. Mr. Oxygen was getting his acts of revenge against Mr. Daniel Nitrogen's wrong decisions. She requested Almighty God to put them on the right path. She realized that it would be practical by punishments to responsible gas men. She demanded that God should announce appropriate actions for their sins. Chapter 17 Almighty God, the Real Physician God listened to her humble request and ordered humans, the best creatures of chemistry land, to plant more trees everywhere on the earth. These plantation activities started killing carbon dioxide in the air and producing more oxygen molecules through the photosynthesis process. In the next step, he methodizes the rainfall by ordering clouds to form larger and larger drops of rain in the sky to clean Earth's atmosphere. In this process, the first rainfall was acidic. Water molecules collided with carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide and produced weak acids, carbonic acid molecules and sulfuric acid molecules. All enemy gaso men were drenched under world rain. The serious head-on collision of water drops with vapors of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide compelled both to oblige with mild strength. Now it was the turn of Mr. Nitrogen's trial to get behaviors modification to avoid recurrence in the future. The Almighty God commanded the culprit Mr. Daniel Nitrogen to confess and loudly say sorry to Mr. Oxygen with roar and lightning. Mild strengthened acid rain both affected plants and trees but did not harm as much as harmful gas of man committed before all over the earth. In this way, Ms. Sulfur's variant sulfur dioxide and to some extent Mr. Nitrogen went under the law and received punishments for their wrongdoings. In the third step of justice, the Almighty Creator commanded Mr. Oxygen a global ring fight with sinner Mr. Daniel Nitrogen. It was going to be a one-sided match as God had taken back the extra power of Daniel Nitrogen. He transferred those into Mr. Priestley Oxygen to take his revenge for the unjustified decision. Once oxygen was in the ring, everything around him disappeared. Bam! Mr. Oxygen hit his opponent. Voices of roaring and yelling of nitrogen faded. His opponent was painting heavily. Nitrogen struggled a lot to save himself from the punches of oxygen. He stumbled back. The tight throw of punches made him roar high with the luster of lightning. It was listened to by the people and all creatures of chemistry land. Mr. Nitrogen yelled in pain with burning colors at the top of his voice. It happened a long time. Flashes of lightning were illuminating the dark of the night. Nitrogen gas on man was converting into nitrogen oxide. High power punishments made Mr. Daniel Nitrogen ashamed and injured deeply. He promised not to use his given power in an unjustified way. 
Although it was punishment for Mr. Nitrogen, it was also to produce nitrates to increase the fertilization capability of the land. Nitrogen oxides reacted with rainwater to produce nitrates. God bestowed blessings to chemistrolline beings for rewarding them with justice. An increase in fertilization increased the cultivation of high quality crops. It was duly necessary to break the strength of proud Mr. Daniel Nitrogen. In this way, Mr. Nitrogen lost his pride in staying untouched by any authority. He felt ashamed and guilty. He did not show resistance like Mr. Carbon. The Almighty Creator instructed the educationist to emphasize the common age using solar, biomass, and human-friendly electrical energy hybrid systems individually or collectively instead of cutting trees. Chapter 18 Mr. Oxygen's Apology Mr. Oxygen felt sorry for Mother Earth. It was clear that the guilt lay with him. He showed his honesty and sincerity towards Earth beings. In turn, she accepted his apology and suggested no punishment for him to Almighty Creator. She realized that he was all alone. His assessment was up to the mark, so his counter-reaction was genuine and natural. She was annoyed over him for not showing resistance against this cruel decision of the Council. Mr. Priestley Oxygen thanked Almighty God for giving him the analyzing power of the situation. The great verdict made him over the moon. The fertilizing rain made the earth many shades greener. It also quenched her thirst for water. People were enjoying new climatical changes. They took a sigh of a relief. The whole environment was clean. Children started playing again in the parks. Animals came out in the rain from their home places. Watching all this scenario, Earth forgave them as it was no doubt a retributive justice to gain complete victory against air pollution. It was a clear lesson for all who deviated from their limits and paths. The sky was smiling, showing multi-rainbow colors, giving a happy gesture and gratefulness to Almighty God. It was also acceptance of His eternal power and authority by Him. It was realizing to the innocent living creatures that there is always a divine power for making justice as justice prevails earlier or later. Conveyed by King Carbon of Chemstraland and narrated by Sabiga Simka and Mughal. If you enjoyed this story, comment, share, like and subscribe Chemistraland for more personified content related to chemistry.